Okay, so thank you, Daniel. Um, let me start off by asking you a question. Who here knows their own shoe size? Raise your hand. Okay, <laughs> just as a thought. Now, let me tell you about my shoe sizes. I have my Air Jordans. They are a US 10 and a half, that is a 44, 44 and a half EU. Then there's my ASIC running shoes. They are a US 11 and a EU 45. And then there's my Birkenstock. They are a size 43. So same feet, but different shoe sizes. Now, how could that be? Let me ask you another question. Have any of you bought a pair of shoes in your size and later found out that they did not fit? Okay, <laughs> so very common problem. And the problem is that a US 11 is not always a US 11 in all brands. Furthermore, the companies try to standardize footwear when our feet are not standardized. Some of us has very wide feet, and some of us have very narrow feet. And most of us have one foot that is strangely larger than the other. Now, imagine you're this guy, and your implant doesn't fit. So this patient's jaw has been replaced by a standardized titanium implant. This is also a foreign material to the patient's body. And this is also a very common problem. The reconstruction of our skull and facial bones is a common challenge in surgery, especially when larger volumes of bone have been removed or destroyed due to tumors, infections, or trauma. And in fact, 75% of us will at some point live with parts in our body that we were not born with. So the medical industry have the past 100 years done a great job of building a sort of um, spare parts library of different materials that can be used to replace damaged tissue. And this gives the surgeon a wide variety of different implants. There are titanium, polymer, bone grafts, or donor bones. But the fact of the matter is that we are still replacing parts of our body with bones that are cut out of other parts of our body, or other people's bodies, or we're using foreign materials like metals and plastics. And it sounds like that we somewhere in the process lost the individual. We are no longer looking at the patient as an individual, but more as a broken car that we can repair with spare parts. Now our bones are made of bone mineral, that is calcium phosphate, water, proteins, and inorganic salts. Not titanium or polymers, which often lead to infections and rejections. In fact, titanium has a complication rate of 30%. And the revision surgery rates that is where we have to go back and redo the operation because an implant or a bone graft has failed or as high as 18%. But this is not the only problem. You see, as the shoe industry, the medical industry is also guessing what sizes we are. We are made out of 206 bones in all different shapes and sizes. And the implants available today are ill-suited for, for this diversity. Often the surgeon is left with two options. Either make the patient fit the standardized metal or polymer implant, or he has to harvest bone from the, from the patient and remodel it during surgery. 
And this often leads to ill-fitting implants. Now, an ill-fitting jaw implant may cause problems such as pain, a problem with speaking, chewing, or even breathing. But this is not the only problem. Something that is often neglected is the aesthetic problems. Our face is made out of 14 very unique bones, which our identity is very much rooted in. And in these cases, even though the patients appreciate the operation and what the surgeons has done for them, they often battle with what they look like. When looking in a mirror, they can't always recognize who is looking back at them. And that is why they are losing their identity and developing a depression. So we wanted to find another way, a way where we could give surgeons back the power to make personalized implants. And 3D printing has gone mainstream a couple of years. And the possibilities seems almost like something out of science fiction. But this is not only a cool technology, it is one that actually can change patients' lives. By combining a patient's CT scan with, a, with 3D modeling and 3D printing, we can now produce patient-specific implants. But what to make the implants out of? Well, why not the minerals that our bones are already made out of? So we at Particle 3D have developed a new kind of bioinks. That is a calcium phosphate that is suspended in a fatty acid matrix. When heated above the melting point of the fatty acid, these, these bioinks become 3D printable. And when they cool, they hold their form, we can then sinter the material which burns off the fatty acid and leaves a pure calcium phosphate implant. Now, there are many benefits of this type of production. First of all, because we use digital fabrication, there's a perfect fit. And second, there's a perfect fit, but we can relieve the surgeon for using these standardized metal and polymer implants or harvesting bone from the patient within the surgery. Secondly, because it is calcium phosphate, it is already a natural part of your bones, which will reduce the risks of rejection. And thirdly, it is degradable, which means that it would remodel and integrate with the native tissue. Now, these bioinks has the possibility for so much more, but it's very important to us that we develop the technology in a focused manner. And that is why we've started with the facial bones, where the shape of the implant really matters. Um, and the current treatments are, as I mentioned, often poor. Later on, we want to address the dental market and the cosmetic surgery and the, the spinal market, hopefully in collaboration with industry partners. So this is the team behind it all. There's Martin and me. We are medical engineers from the University of Southern Denmark and full-time in particle 3D. Then there is Morten Andersen. He is associate professor also at the University of Southern Denmark. And we have our maxillofacial facial surgeon, Torben Thuisen. So, where are we today? Well, we've done three studies in mice, one pilot study in pigs, and we are currently running a larger study in eight pigs. So the first one was a cranial calvar defect. This is where we make a hole in the mice's head and insert our implant and the results we got were better than expected. Eight weeks after, the mice that had no implants were not able to close the hole, but the one with the implant showed that the implant not only fuses together with the native tissue, 
but it also developed new bone, bone marrow, and blood vessels within the implant. This means that giving time, your own cells will transform the implant into a living bone that will become a natural part of you. Now, the second study was a segmented mandible body defect. This is where we cut a piece out of the jaw and reconstruct it with a patient-specific implant. Or I should probably say pig-specific implant here because the main focus of the study was to illustrate that we could create a anatomically correct implant. So we scanned the pig and uh, we used the CT scan to produce this pig-specific implant. And here you can see a 3D model. Um, this is one week after the operation, and you can see how the implant fits in with the rest of the jaw. Now, the um, last study that we are currently running is maybe the best of them all. Um, here we gave our surgeon totally freedom on how he wanted to design the implant. And this is what some of the first drawings. Um, so this is the final design, and here we are 3D printing his design. And it may be look a little strange to some of you, but the main thought about the design was that we wanted to mimic how our bones is actually uh, constructed, because they are not dense objects. Um, in comparison with a product that is currently on the market, ours was oval. It fitted perfectly into the hole we made. And the other one was a solid uh, witch that the surgeon had to remodel to make it fit into this hole we made. Now, what we have learned in addition to the rational benefits of making these patient-specific implants is that there are emotional ones as well. Not only for the patient, but the surgeon, when they are empowered with designing an implant, they connect with it in another way. Um, because they can see that they can do so much more for the patient now. And that is important to give the surgeons the right tools so they can change these patients' lives. They are replacing millions of bones each year. And we are, our populations are growing, we're all living longer. So it is clear that in the future, we need implants that not only last as long as we do, but becomes a real part of us and not foreign to our bodies. And I believe that we are in a junction of technology where 3D modeling, 3D printing, and biomaterials can allow us to make implants that is specifically for the individual. I believe that we're starting to see an era of the patient-specific implant that is tailored by the, their own surgeon with the patient's uniqueness in mind. Now, I've been given a great opportunity in standing on this stage and telling our story, but in fact, it's, it's not about us or the technology. It's about giving patients back their ide the, the identity and thereby giving back their lives. So thank you very much for listening.